this keynote lecture, we'd like to focus upon the acute type B aortic dissection, presenting selected insights from the IRAD database. The catastrophic cardiovascular condition of aortic dissection was further described in detail by Frank Nichols in his necrosity report of King George II. The following was written. On the 25th of October, he, King George II, rose as usual at six and drank his chocolate, for all his actions were invariably methodic. A quarter after seven, he went into a little closet, his German valet de chamber, and waiting heard a noise, and running in, found the king dead on the floor. Nichols was directed to open and embalm the royal body. What he found, and meticulously described, was a first clear account of the condition we now know as aortic dissection. Quote, the pericardium was found distended with a quantity of coagulated blood nearly a pint. The whole heart was so compressed as to prevent any blood contained in the veins from being forced into the auricles. Therefore, the ventricles were found absolutely void of blood. And the trunk of the aorta, we found a transverse fissure on its inner side, about an inch and a half long, through which some blood had recently passed under its external coat and formed an elevated ecchymosis. It wasn't until the mid-20th century that the first large case series was published and the first surgical resection was performed. In 1965, DeBakey and team identified clinically distinct variants of the aortic section as type 1 and 2 originating in the ascending aorta and type 3 originating in the descending aorta, and that descending aortic section significantly differed from ascending aortic section with regards to presentation and outcomes, further highlighting the differing clinical practices and management of ascending versus descending aortic section, Stanford classification was developed in the 1970s. However, data on the optimal diagnostic and treatment modalities for type B dissection was slow to evolve throughout the later half of the 20th century, even as newer diagnostic techniques and management strategies became commonplace. There are two primary hypotheses that have been proposed to explain acute aortic dissection. The first theory holds that an initial tear in the intima leads to blood from the aortic lumen surging into the media and separating the intima from the aorta, creating a tiny <coughs> false lumen. The second theory, in contrast, holds that the vase of azorum and the more outer portions of the media hemorrhage first, and then secondarily cause intimal rupture. In both theories, it is thought that the pressure of pulsatile blood flow extends the dissection, typically in an antigrade fashion. In the current era, Aortic dissection remains a relatively rare but life-threatening disease, occurring in 3.5 per 100,000 persons per year, with recent evidence suggesting an increasing incidence of up to 14 per 100,000 persons per year. Up to 30% of these cases are believed to be type 2 in nature. To further elucidate contemporary practice patterns and outcomes of aortic dissection, the International Registry of Acute Aortic Dissection, IRAD, was established in 1996 initially enrolling patients in 12 centers of excellence in 6 countries, with further expansion to 30 centers in 11 countries. IRAD has now enrolled over 5,000 patients. Since the landmark initial publication in 2000, IRAD publications have steadily increased the knowledge and understanding that we have about aortic dissection. Data from IRAD have identified basic risk factors including bicuspid aortic valve, Marfan syndrome, male gender, age greater than 60, and hypertension. In our review, we address three areas in which IRAD data has recently advanced our understanding of acute type B aortic dissection, namely temporal classification, especially for the subacute time period, risk stratification for identifying complicated cases, and indications for thoracic endovascular aortic repair. Classically, aortic dissection has been classified in two groups based upon the time of symptom onset. Acute dissection has been diagnosed when clinical symptoms have lasted for 14 days or less, while greater than two weeks of symptom duration has been considered to be chronic. Though this distinction was made in an era prior to the advent of modern diagnostic and surgical and non-surgical management strategies, this categorization has continued to guide contemporary care of aortic dissection. Recently, Brewer and team analyzed the IRAD database developing Kaplan-Meier survival curves for type B aortic dissection identifying distinct inflection points creating four distinct time periods. Hyperacute, with symptom onset to 24 hours. Acute, with symptom onset to two to seven days. Subacute, the eight to 30 day period. And chronic, the greater than 30 day period. 
cumulative survival continued to decline throughout all four of these temporal groups, regardless of treatment modality. 94 to 99 percent, 82 to 93 percent, 77 to 92 percent, and 73 to 91 percent, respectively. The finding that survival continues to decrease significantly up to even 30 days post-symptom onset into what has been traditionally considered the chronic phase is novel. While the current guidelines for the management of patients with type B aortic disease utilize the traditional acute versus chronic time periods with differing classification for various interventions in acute and chronic type B aortic session, it is expected that this new IRED classification system will assist in improving best practice for management. While no uniform criteria exists to differentiate complicated versus uncomplicated type B acute dissection, a recent interdisciplinary consensus document has suggested the following definition of complicated type B acute aortic dissection. Malperfusion, indicated by impending organ failure. Hypertension, when associated with malperfusion or persisting with high levels despite full medical therapy. Or increases in periaortic hematoma and hemorrhagic pleural effusion and two subsequent CT examinations suggestive of impending rupture. In IRED, refractory or recurrent pain or refractory hypertension have been noted to be predictors of mortality increasing the risk of in-hospital mortality after medical management. 35.6% in intermediate risk group patients with re recurrent or refractory pain or refractory hypertension versus 1.5% in the low risk group without any clinical complications. Complicated acute type B air dissection in the elderly shows an even more striking mortality. Jonker and team found that in IRED, the in-hospital mortality in such complicated patients greater than 70 years of age was found to be 30% versus 10% for those younger than 70 treated with T-bar, 34% versus 17% for those treated surgically, and 32% versus 14% for those treated with optimal medical management alone. Age greater than 70 was found to be an independent predictor for in-hospital mortality with an odds ratio of 2.4. Interestingly, though there was a significant decline in the rate of TEVAR, or open surgical intervention in the elderly, there also was a non-significant trend towards decreased mortality in the elderly treated with TVAR versus open surgery or medical management. Based upon these observations, there has been a call for improved strategies for the acute management and surveillance of type B aortic section. Recently, Fattori and team evaluated five-year survival in type B aortic dissection patients enrolled in IRAD receiving either only medical or TAVAR therapy. They found that approximately one in four patients with type B disease received thoracic endovascular aortic repair therapy. Moreover, those patients that received TVAR therapy were far more likely to present with complicated disease, 62% versus 37%. Nonetheless, in hospital mortality and one year mortality was statistically similar between the two patient groups. However, five year mortality was found to be significantly lower than the group treated with TVAR compared to optimal medical management alone, 16% versus 29%. This benefit was seen despite the initially higher risk profile of the TVAR group due to the complicated nature of their dissection. Patients with uncomplicated acute type B aortic dissection should be treated with medical therapy. However, they remain at considerable risk for morbidity and mortality. Surveillance imaging is important. Imaging of uncomplicated dissections should be performed at admission, seven days, discharge, and six weeks. Thereafter, annual imaging and follow-up is recommended. Blood pressure control and lifestyle modifications including lifting, pushing, and pulling restrictions are also important. Intervention is recommended for complicated chronic type B aortic dissection, which is defined by the following. Total aortic diameter greater than or equal to 55 millimeters, total arch diameter yearly increase greater than four millimeters, and or recurrent symptoms. Frank Nichols' postmortem description of King George II's aortic dissection was written over two and a half centuries ago. It wasn't until over 100 years ago later that effective interventions were utilized. In contrast, the past two decades have brought along remarkable advancements in the understanding of acute aortic dissection that is beginning to transform management. 
much of that progress has been and continues to be heralded by the IRAN crew. Though many improvements have been made, the overall doctoring of acute aortic dissection remains suboptimal. Thus, it is with great humility, combined with optimism, that we see a hopeful future.